Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg attends Industry Day in Cannock. Queen Rania of Jordan gives a speech in London. Princess Charlene of Monaco discusses her health and family in a new interview. And Princess Marta Louise of Norway and Shaman Durek make a huge announcement. All this and much more coming up next on your World Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone, and a happy Wednesday. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for September 13th, 2023. So let's start off the episode with good news, shall we? Her Highness, Princess Marta Louise of Norway and her fiancé, Shaman Durek, finally announced the date of their wedding, August 31st, 2024. In his social media post, the Shaman wrote, quote, Princess Marta Louise and I are happy to announce our upcoming wedding at the Union Hotel in Garunge, Norway, on August 31st, 2024. Garunge is known for its spectacular fjords and dramatic mountains. The Garunge Fjord is on UNESCO's World Heritage Site and represents Norway's rich culture and striking nature. Marta and I are extremely happy to celebrate our love in Garunge's beautiful surroundings. It means a lot to us to gather family and friends in a place so rich in Norwegian history and with such a spectacular nature surrounding our big moment. Garenge is a perfect place to embrace our love, end quote. The lovely couple announced their engagement in early June 2022. Upon hearing the news, their majesties, King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway, issued a statement stating, quote, The Queen and I are delighted that Princess Marta Louise and Durek Barrett have announced their wedding plans today. We are delighted to welcome Derek Barrett to the family and look forward to celebrating their big day with them. We wish Marta and Derek all the best. End quote. Their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Haakon and Crown Princess Metamerit of Norway, also issued a statement stating, quote, We congratulate Princess Marta and Derek Barrett on their wedding in August next year. We are happy for them and look forward to celebrating with them in Garinge. We wish Marta, Durek, and the girls all the best for the future. End quote. His Majesty King Carl Gustav of Sweden received a special gift from the staff of the royal court this morning on the occasion of the King's Golden Jubilee. Over the past year, the royal court raised money to, quote, erect two of the King's monograms at the gate to Lo Gordon. This version of the King's monogram was designed in 1996 by master engraver Leonard Asquell, end quote. Thereafter, His Majesty the King received a beautiful eight-square-meter tapestry, a gift from members of Parliament and the government. According to the Swedish Royal Court, the tapestry was, quote, created after a watercolor by the artist Lars Lorin with the title Stone in Water, end quote. In Copenhagen, Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark hosted a reception for exchange students from Greenland and students from Denmark at Christian VIII Slot at Emelienborg. Her Majesty, Queen Letizia of Spain, presided over the opening of the 2023-2024 vocational training course year at the Centro Integrado de FP de Comunicación y Magian y Sonido in Langrejo. After being welcomed by several government officials, Her Majesty the Queen unveiled a commemorative plaque, watched a video presentation about the school, toured the facility including a photography classroom and a sound recording studio, and the library. The visit ended with Her Majesty the Queen attending a meeting with teachers as well as students in the Assembly Hall. His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco attended the Rendezvous des Septembre Association annual reception held at the Monte Carlo Bay Lagoon. In the evening, the Sovereign Prince attended a back-to-school cocktail reception organized by the Foreign Residence Club of Monaco, 
held at Jimmy Z's. The reception was held to officially welcome new members of the club, as well as to celebrate the new school year. As I mentioned in Monday's episode, Her Serene Highness Princess Charlene of Monaco gave an exclusive interview with the newspaper Monaco Maton. The first part of the interview is in the link above. When asked how she feels about the malicious rumors about her marriage to His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, which was started by the trashy French rag Boissy, the princess says that she no longer wants to respond to the rumors. The Sovereign Prince, however, recently spoke with the Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera. Quote, Charlene is always by my side. I don't understand all these rumors. It hurts us deeply. It hurts. About the fact that she lives elsewhere in Switzerland and we only meet by appointment, these are lies. They are lies. End quote. When asked about her children, hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco and Princess Gabriella of Monaco, and their personalities, and how they are handling being in the public eye, as well as participating in various engagements with their parents, the princess replied, quote, Gabriella is quite spontaneous. She has a certain confidence. Jacques is very reserved, but very observant. I believe it is the prerogative of boys at this age, where girls are perhaps more expressive. They are complimentary in a sense, and gradually tame their environment. But... They are still young and developing day by day. You and the Sovereign Prince share a passion for sport, swimming, tennis, water skiing, etc. Do the children like sports? The princess replied, quote, The first thing that seemed essential to me and my husband was to teach them to swim so that they did not have any fear of the water. Today, they are very comfortable and often the prince is with them in the water for aquatic activities like we did this summer in Corsica. Gabriella has a passion for hip-hop dance. Jacques practices taekwondo. The importance is to give them a good education, self-confidence, and a happy childhood. I don't necessarily want to push them into intensive practice of a sport. The prince and I were Olympic athletes. It is a choice that is very demanding and requires constant training, which, I speak with knowledge of the facts, can take precedence over your childhood. End quote. At eight years old, did you already have within you the determination to be an Olympic athlete? The princess replied, quote, yes, completely. I had this ambition within me to be the best swimmer in the world. I have always loved swimming since my childhood in Zimbabwe, where I would jump into the pool with my dog while listening to the advice of my mother, who taught me how to swim. Raising children who have an institutional role is not easy. Are hereditary Prince Jacques and Princess Gabriella fully aware of their role in the principality? The princess replied, quote, They are still very young, but they are already aware of their role in Monaco. The main thing is to communicate, to answer their questions, and to help them take their first steps. But above all, my husband and I think it is very important that at school and in their daily activities that they live like any other child their age. They are only children, but subject to public scrutiny. Our family surrounds them to understand their role. This will take time and adjustment in a world that is constantly changing. End quote. This year, 2023, all of Monaco is celebrating the centenary of the birth of Prince Rene III, and you attended several events. What did you learn about your husband's father? The princess replied, quote, I know he was a great man. I see that he was a great leader who did so much for his country. And I am proud that my children are learning about their grandfather through the historical stories we have this year. This allows them to understand the history of their country and their family. When we drive around in Monaco and we see a photo or an effigy of Prince Rene III, they both say, oh, look, it's grandfather. It's touching, end quote. In an interview you did with us last December, you said you felt much better after your health problems. Are you still in this dynamic? How do you feel today? The princess replied, quote, Today, I feel in great shape, happy and serene. I hope to be able to resume sport soon. I walk regularly, but I'd like to get back into swimming training to regain a little more energy and feel stronger, end quote.
In Amman, His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan presided over the swearing in of newly appointed ambassadors at Al Husseinia Palace. The newly appointed ambassadors will be stationed in the Swiss Confederation, Malaysia, the Kingdom of Spain, Romania, the Republic of Chile, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, and Kazakhstan. On Tuesday, Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan attended the COGX Global Leadership Summit in connection with the seventh edition of the Global COGX Festival in London. Launched in 2014, the COGX Festival gathers global leaders, the tech industry, and the public for wide-ranging discussions on the implications of artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies. The COGX Global Leadership Summit, established in 2020, has hosted over 3,500 expert speakers from business, government, academia, philanthropy, and other fields. In her speech, Her Majesty the Queen called for a new, quote, model of leadership that aims to cultivate common ground and inject humanity into decision-making, highlighting the need to come together on shared challenges, such as the migrant, refugee, and climate crises. End quote. In Den Haag, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands held an audience this morning with the President of the Federal Council of the Federal Republic of Germany, Mr. Peter Chencha, at Palais Nordande. On Tuesday in Amsterdam, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands met with representatives from the Dutch gaming industry at Guerrilla Studios. Gaming as in video games like Tomb Raider. According to a press release, the Dutch gaming industry consists of approximately 630 companies that together have more than 4,500 employees. Game companies in the Netherlands make entertainment games and applied games that have a social role and impact. Over the past three years, an average of 18% annual turnover growth has been achieved. Half of the Dutch, more than 8.7 million people, play games. I'm not Dutch, but I play Tomb Raider. Anyway, moving on. His Royal Highness, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg, held an audience this morning with the Minister of Patriots and Veterans of the Republic of Korea, Mr. Minsik Park, at the Palais Grand Ducal. On Tuesday, the hereditary Grand Duke, accompanied by the Minister of the Economy, Mr. Franz Foyette, attended the FEDIL's Industry Day in Kanek. According to the Cour Grand Ducal, the hereditary Grand Duke and Minister Foyette are both concerned about the, quote, health of the Luxembourg industry, attended the two round tables against a backdrop of concerns and challenges. The exchanges between Ministers Claude Maisch, Franz Foyette, Joël Welfring, Christoph Hansen, and other political, industrial, and academic leaders highlighted national ambitions whose implementation is closely linked, among other things, to the energy, innovation, the environment, and digital. End quote. In Brussels, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Kingdom of Belgium at the Palais Royal de Bruxelles. The newly appointed ambassadors are from Barbados, the Kingdom of Bhutan, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, and the Republic of Costa Rica. Last evening, his Majesty the King and His Royal Highness Prince Emmanuel of Belgium attended the 2024 European Championship qualification football match between Belgium and Estonia. So, who won the match? Belgium, of course. Well done. And finally, on Tuesday... Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales, as patron of the Forward Trust, visited the HMP High Down, a men's prison, in Surrey. 
The purpose of yesterday's visit was to learn how the Forward Trust charity is supporting those in the criminal justice system who are managing and recovering from addiction. I like her hair. It's very fluffy. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, September 14th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.